The purpose of today's podcast is to suggest ways to help you find the cause of your fears. Knowing the causes of your fear and anxiety will go a long way in finding the solution. Here are but a few suggestions. I guess my first question is if there are any topics, any particular topics that make you uncomfortable to talk about. And then ask yourself why. And is this topic, is it based on fear? I want you to write that down. Why are you, or what topics are you afraid of or that make you uncomfortable? And then again, take a moment and examine why. Okay, now I want to take a moment and suggest a topic. Relationships. Is it possible you're currently in an unhealthy, unhappy relationship that's dysfunctional and maybe you are afraid of getting out of it? So again, next question is why? Why are you afraid? What are you scared of? Is it maybe never finding somebody else? Uh, not, not being loved or being hurt again? Or maybe there's a fear of being alone? And if there is that fear, for example, of being alone, can you go deeper? Is that fear based on something much deeper? Okay, now on the topic of being alone, do you actually enjoy being alone? And if no, why not? What deeper fear is it based in? Is what is so scary about being alone? Is it because it makes you vulnerable or you could be vulnerable? Are you comfortable with being vulnerable? If no, why not? Can you pinpoint a deeper fear? Write that down. Is it the change? Does the change scare you? What about it scares you? What is change? Is it really just fear of change? Or not knowing? The unknowns. Maybe it's not change that scares you. It's the unknowns that go along with it. Or the uncertainty. You like to have predictability. You like having certainty in your life. And not knowing something scares you. Or makes you feel uncomfortable. What about it makes you... What about it scares you? Write that down and circle it. Now, what else could be, could it be? Are you afraid of the truth? Or are you afraid of hearing the truth? Why? Maybe, I know it's convenient to not get the truth. Is that what you're afraid of? You don't want to hear the truth. You know it's not good. Or it would be objective. And that's uncomfortable. Are some of your concurrent fears of that you might be afraid of what other people would think of you. Maybe there's some cultural issues here at play. Uh, we don't want to face certain fears like uh, fear of being alone after a separation or divorce. The, you know, the cultural norms, the cultural stereotypes, what your community might think about you. Is that what scares you? Are any of these fears big or obvious? What deeper fear is this ob obvious fear based on? Can you think back to a childhood event that created this fear? Going back to the fear of being alone? 
is that come from your childhood? Where's uh, did someone leave? Childhood trauma is real, and if you know children aren't brought up in a safe, stable, nonviolent, and loving environment, and things are happening, bad things are happening at home, that could create what's called an ACE, adverse childhood experience, aka trauma. Maybe you've experienced something that was traumatic. It's not as while well, you were very young. Now, it doesn't mean maybe something traumatic happened to you that was illegal. I mean, but that's always possible. Maybe someone hurt you as a child and it was, you know, never went reported. But also sometimes there are traumatic events that are legal, like maybe parents are divorcing or things just aren't working out at home and uh, changes are being made. You have to now go stay with grandma for whatever reason. Well... We know, well, as an adult, we kind of, we now know why things happen the way they did. Is that what's causing this anxiety? What are your triggers that make you so nervous and uneasy? Is it, you know, fear of missing out, being left out? Again, going back to that loneliness. Did you ever really get all the facts about the situation or did you just get the scary facts? Remember, when you're encountering a situation or encountering an event, it's important to get all of the facts. This can pr prevent you from relying on exaggerated or fearful assumptions. By, by focusing on the facts, you can discern fact from fiction, discern reality from what is not reality. And hopefully that'll give you more clarity about the situation. If you just are confronted with a traumatic or fearful experience and you just run away, all you remember from that experience is the thing that drove you away. And maybe you left with before getting all the facts. And you're now you're relying on fearful memories, fearful assumptions, or maybe uh, what somebody else told you, which was a little exaggerated. So be sure to get all the facts. Okay, so now that we agree that it's important to get all the facts, I, I think we can agree it might now be easier to challenge the negative thoughts, these fears, these anxieties. So when you fear, encounter something or a thought or an event that makes you fearful or anxious, I want you to now challenge those fears, challenge those thoughts by asking yourself questions that will help to maintain the objectivity and the common sense. By doing this, it will help you to find the source of your own fears and give you an opportunity to do a, a self-evaluation. I, I would also encourage you, if, if you feel it's necessary, to go talk to a professional to help you answer the questions. What's causing this anxiety, this fear? Why am I afraid? Why am I behaving this way? Is it something deeper? These questions, along with objective data, removing the exaggerations and the fearful assumptions will help you maintain your objectivity, maintain the common sense in the situation, and hopefully help you find out what it is that you are afraid of. Again, earlier I'm, I threw out a suggestion, maybe loneliness. Well, why, what is so scary about loneliness? Is it really loneliness or is it maybe a fear of rejection? I read an interesting um, publication not too long ago. I apologize. I can't really remember the, the author, but I'll, I'll try to summarize it a little bit. It was about the concept of loneliness, fear, rejection. Um, when we're being asked to leave the group or being forced to leave 
the group, whether it's a family, you're getting kicked out of the family because of accusations of abuse or, or you're being uh, fired from a job, you're just too toxic or you're just not a right fit. Uh, it can be very fear inducing. And sometimes we can become angry and anger. Anger is a mask for fear, by the way. So if you're always angry, find out why you're angry. And many times it's, there's a fear. Uh, as a domestic violence lawyer, when I'm, I, I only represent victims, but when I'm dealing with a pro se abuser, a pro se means somebody who doesn't have a lawyer. So I'm able to talk to them directly. So when I'm talking to a pro se abuser, you know, they're, they're very upset at the victim. They want to hurt the victim. They start spewing out all this obscenities and curse words towards me. And, you know, when I finally get them to court and have the, finally, you know, have them being held accountable, they really change their persona. As we get closer to the court date, uh, you really start to see that, uh, the anger go away and I'm able to really unmask the abuser. And what I see underneath is someone who's actually afraid. Now, why would an abuser be afraid? Uh, well, they have their own anxieties, their own fears, their own failures, but why, why would they do this? Maybe it's because uh, their own, they saw their own parents relationship not working out and uh, the parents had always fought and that's all they know, but they want the relationship to work out, but they don't know how to love in a healthy way. So they revert back to the only thing they know, which is using anger and yelling and screaming, but and belittling and, you know, intimidation and all of these things. And maybe it's, you know, it's their own fears because of their own failures, their own losses. Maybe they, they, they too are afraid of being lonely and that's why, um, uh, they just don't know how to deal with it. So they become abusive. They hurt their partner. They hurt their wife or their, you know, or their husband, whatever. Um, it's about fear, fear of being lonely. I think for some people are more complex than just being afraid of being lonely because there's a lot of other factors to include. I mean, well, what if, uh, you know, the person who could, who's potentially being lonely, what if they're the caretaker of a, a small child and they, they need that income, they need that stability. They need uh, someone who's going to be there and protect them. So, you know, they get into a new relationship and uh, the ex has some choice words and opinions about that. Why would they be leaving me and going straight into a new relationship, AKA they're cheating on me, blah, blah, blah. We don't know that. Maybe it wasn't that they're a cheater. Maybe they're actually deep down, they're just afraid and they need more assurance. They need more security, something that, the abuser was just was not providing. But back to my story about the uh, the publication I'd read. It had a great story and it had a great analogy. But it, it was about um, like Bronze Age humans, uh, like five thousand years ago when we were still cavemen, and uh, we we had these little groups of people like little tribes. And if you were in the tribe, if you're part of the tribe, if you were contributed, then you're good to go. You're safe. That is your security. Uh, it, Cause if you're not part of this tribe that will protect you, then you are by yourself, you're vulnerable and you can be eaten by the wolves. And back then, you know, getting kicked out of a group, that's when the rubber meets the road. Getting kicked out of the uh, group of other cavemen, that is a death sentence. It goes to a very primitive part of our brain. We can't be excluded from the group. That's why it, it hurts so much when you're going through a, pain, a painful breakup or a painful divorce, um, maybe um, some serious cultural issues at stake, the, you know, disapproval from the community because of the choice to dissolve the relationship. There can be a lot of, a lot of things here. Because if, you know, the, 
the tribe's weapons, the tribe and the campfire, that's all the things that you guys got. And outside of that circle of protection, there's, there's wolves out there that are ready to eat you. Again, you don't want to get kicked out of the group. You need to fit in. You must conform. It is survival. If you go into the group and start just causing too many problems or being a burden, they're going to kick you out. If you're not carrying your weight, uh, they're going to kick you out. If you hurt other people, they're going to kick you out. Uh, same thing with modern day relationships. Uh, of course, we don't, you know, if you get go through a divorce, at the end of the divorce, you don't get eaten by wolves. Or if your spouse kicks you out of the house, you don't have to worry about being eaten by wolves. But still, it goes to the same primitive part of the brain where we don't, we are so afraid of losing the group. So maybe that's what it is. It's the rejection and loneliness. That is what scares us to death. I, uh, that is, I think that's a real possibility as to what our true fears are. If you can find out or maybe study more on what loneliness actually is, is it really, is, is it such a bad thing after all? Uh, rejection. What, what is rejection? Why do we feel that way? Um, it's being part of the group is just too important to us and we don't want to be rejected. That would just destroy us. Just like the, the caveman who's getting kicked out of the, um, the group that could be, you know, he's not, a, he's not going to be able to de defend himself on his own. We know that, uh, one caveman versus 10 wolves, that's not going to work, but, uh, a tribe of a hundred cavemen and just a handful of wolves out there, you know, you know, the group, you're, you're infinitely safer in numbers. So maybe, maybe that's what it is. It's the rejection. It's the fear of loneliness. Examine those two things. I don't know. Maybe your fears are different. But I do think there is a smart way to approach your fear and anxieties. Find out what they are, identify them, and then figure out a way to create a task for yourself to slowly dismantle those fears and anxieties. I, I would suggest you find out what your fear and anxiety is and figure out a way to create some type of project or task to help you overcome that fear and anxiety. And then take that fear and anxiety or that task and divide it up into a honey uh, to a hundred mini tasks. That way it doesn't seem like such an overbearing task. It doesn't seem like such a big project anymore because you took that big project and you broke it up into a hundred tiny little pieces. And then you're just going to handle the project in small manageable chunks. Uh, again, not, not tackle it all at once. You're just taking it one day at a time. We found a solution. We found a solution to help solve this problem. Maybe you need to get the help of a professional. So write down a list of what you think your fears are, your the possible solutions. Talk to a professional about managing this fear and slowly dismantling it. Again, the purpose of breaking the tasks down is so we don't have to create a situation where we have to tackle everything at once. We're just taking this big task and breaking it into a series of smaller steps. And be between now and the next 30, 60, 90 days, however long it takes, uh, based on how many tasks you have, you can really, you know, just take it one day at a time and just handle a little bit at a time. And during this journey, you are learning more about yourself. You are also learning new things, new, new techniques and paths to s solve these f fears. And since you're taking a slow approach, you can, you also have a, this is a great opportunity to learn from experience. Uh, you can, you know, take the lessons learned from your experiences by handling these small tasks to help produce a better plan going forward based on what learning what works and what 
doesn't work. Another way to think of this is like the uh, Dave Ramsey uh, debt snowball. If you're not familiar with that, uh, Dave Ramsey is a financial uh, coach uh, with who uh, he wrote he wrote books on uh, achieving financial peace through a seven step process, and also he has a great radio show. Check it out. But one thing uh, Dave Ramsey teaches is what's called the debt snowball, where you can actually um, you can actually get out of credit card debt by or it's, well, it's called the debt snowball. It's where you start you pay off your smallest credit cards first, and then kind of save the biggest ones first. That way, uh, save the biggest ones for last. I know mathematically it doesn't make sense, but getting out of debt is not. It's actually not about math. It's about momentum. And going ahead and just paying off the small cards, it'll kind of give you some quick wins, kind of build up your confidence so you can tackle the larger debts later. That's kind of the concept behind it. And also with this process of taking your fears and finding a solution to solve those or to conquer those fears and of that solution, you divide it into small manageable tasks so you can actually get some quick wins early on and build your confidence at the same time that we're reducing your fear. Anyways, I hope this was a great podcast. Uh, hope you got something good out of it. Um, thank you for listening and please consider subscribing.